Morning again. Great to see you, friends. Pastor Pete here in beautiful Dundee, Oregon. It's uh, the 11th of September, Wednesday, 2024, and uh, time for some coffee and a look into God's Word and to see how He might guide, how we might live. So grab your coffee, grab your Word, open up to Mark, the ninth chapter. Ninth chapter of Mark. We're going to be in verses 38 to 41. Have you ever heard the concept that if, if they're not, if there is someone's not against us, then they must be for us. Anybody not against us must be for us. This is maybe the origin, or or uh, certainly a, a, a reference to that, is contained in the scripture today. John, uh, Mark nine thirty eight to forty one. It says this: John, this would be the apostle John, said to Jesus, "Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name." And we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, don't stop him, for no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. For the one who is not against us is for us. For truly I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will by no means lose his reward. So, little vignette. To set the bigger picture for you, uh, they're on their way to Jerusalem, walking along, and, and Jesus is performing miracles and is ministering to people individually uh, and and collectively, and they're learning and talking along the way. And there's there's a number of small vignettes that go along through there. The bigger scene, what had happened previously, not too long before that, verses 33 to 35, was they were discussing along the way who was going to be the greatest when God when Christ comes into His kingdom. And he stopped them. He said, what were you guys talking about? And they didn't want to tell him. But then they finally confessed it. And then he said in verse 35, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and a servant of all. So he's been giving them some correction because they've been thinking about what it means to be a follower of Christ in a certain way. And um, John, right after this episode, basically turns his attention to others who are not in their troop. And so even though Jesus had brought some correction about how we should think about it and how to be really first in his kingdom is to become last, to take the low road and be the servant, John's like, hey, well, what about those guys? And uh, so what Jesus is pointing out, and I think what's a good lesson for us today, is that there's plenty of people out there perhaps that are performing ministry tasks and deeds and maybe even miracles in Jesus' name that aren't in our group. And it's easy for us to take on an exclusionary attitude. It's easy for us to say, well, we disagree because of this and that and the other, and to actually point out what's wrong with why they're in some group and you're in some different group, a different denomination or different church within the denomination. And at the root of that exclusionary attitude, there's a sense of pride and fear. And it's not the pride that, it's the pride of non, I mean, it's the wrong pride. It's the pride that leads to a false pride. And Jesus says, they're doing mighty works in my name. He says, get get your approach to this right. Get your perspective right. John, in fact, John says, teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name. We tried to stop him because he was not following us. And Jesus says, don't stop him. He's doing something in my name. And so we have this very clear distinction between the perspectives. And and so Jesus is saying, there's a lot of people out there that perhaps you're not going to agree with on every doctrinal point. You're not going to understand everything. We know that God is doesn't reveal everything to us perfectly. And there's a lot of mysteries in his Bible. And there's things yet to be revealed. And so... John really is functioning out of a point of jealousy and a point of insecurity here. Um, you know, even before that, even, if you even go back further in, in this chapter, uh, verses 14 through 29 is a story of there's a, a, a young boy that the disciples tried to cast a demon out and were unable to. And Jesus, it went to him finally, and he came and he did it. And they said, why couldn't we cast the demon out? And he said, some demons only come out can only come out, some spirits can only come out by prayer. 
implying very strongly, especially if you take it in light of the fact that they then saw others who were casting out demons in Jesus' name, that John and the disciples had not established as clear or as strong of a relationship with God through prayer as perhaps these other others had. And they were operating in Jesus' name and they were already demonstrating that power that Jesus promises us if you do things in my name. Well, doing them in his name also depends on the relationship is forged. And that relationship is forged in prayer and in Bible study and in prayer. <laughs> so uh, I just want to encourage you today, be careful. Be careful about your own propensity towards exclusionary attitudes. or And you may be even excluding yourself from someone else. Be careful about the boundaries that we build, the boundaries that you're building or you have felt built against you. Those boundaries of denominations and churches and geography and what you believe and understand can often lead to breaking into the unity that Christ desires and diminishing the effectiveness in actually spreading his word. So I would really encourage you today to consider your own relationship with God through Christ in prayer and that you would also consider how others are doing the same. And the best way I know of to forge unity in the name of Jesus, is to pray together and to pray for each other and to repeat that. So I encourage you today, in Jesus' name, to go find a brother or a sister and pray with them and then seek to have your hearts knit together in Jesus and then begin to see the miracles of life coming from each other's lives. I hope this makes sense to you today. I hope you're encouraged. Uh, God bless you today, in Jesus' name.